Hey, Thomas Bartke here with another video uh, for the Artisan Sound channel. I thought in this video, I'm just going to kind of let you sit in on my next session that um, I'm doing to complete the setup here of the West Side Story sound, um, sound automation in QLab. And I think I'm going to just explain a little bit more about QLab and what we're using it for and how we're using it um, in the context of automating uh, the settings on the Behringer X32 sound console, which we're using to mix all the sound. So in QLab, which is running on on a computer that's up in the in the booth, in QLab we're we're playing all the music cues, the tracks from QLab. And so they're being started like this here. So you can basically, you hit go, then the music cue plays. Now, if you put the music cue into a group and then you configure the group to be in timeline mode, that means that all of the events that you add into the same group are being executed at the same time. When you click go on the group, you see now I have the group selected. It doesn't have to be open like this. Eventually, for the ease of use of the QLab operator during the shows, this will all be collapsed because it doesn't matter to them what happens in there. They only need to see what goes, what is their next action. And that's, you know, whatever that is, whatever the group is in this case. So then all of these events that are inside the same group are fired with one click of go on the group. And when it's in timeline mode, uh, that means they go off all at the same time. And now if you want to achieve that, uh, some of these events that are here included in this group are, are firing with a delay relative to where we are in the music queue, then simply what you do is you, you configure a pre-wait time. That means you're going to add, you're going to enter a value here and so this is essentially the offset, the time that you need, that you want to wait from the beginning of the sound file when that started with the with the click on the group, uh, with the with the go on the group. You want to wait x amount of seconds until this next event executes. So you just simply go into the sound file and you look at where we are or listen to it, and then you take the time from the timeline here where that with where you want this next event to happen. And then you just put that time, that time offset time into this one. So let's say this one is at 40 seconds in. Oh no, sorry, that this one's the actual, the actual sound file that will never be delayed. But so whatever those MIDI events are, let's say you want them, you spotted it in the sound file where it needs to go. So you just simply uh, double click on this here and you put it to where you spotted it. And then this, will start when you hit go on the group but it will wait it will run down this amount of time here that you select that you put into as the into the pre-wait uh, field it'll wait that amount of time before it actually fires this this event okay so that's how it works so these are all midi events they have a red x here because i have currently not configured any specific midi, MIDI destination but that's not a problem. The reason for that is that I'm doing this at my house where I don't have um, I don't have it hooked up to an X32 console. And so I'm just doing the setup. And then once I get into the studio, I'm just going to configure the MIDI out in this Workspace settings window here. I'm just going to set a MIDI out patch, a MIDI patch. And, um, and then these will all go away and uh, all the MIDI cues will have the destination identified and they will recognize that yes there is an output available and they'll be all valid and the red x's will go away so nothing to worry about right now so in this session right now what i'm going to do is i'm just sitting here uh with the score on my by my side and i'm going to look for uh, these specific events where they're supposed to happen and i'm going to go through the score to to pinpoint where that is and i'm going to listen along the with the sound cue 
uh, and figure out where exactly what the time code or the time offset is for these events relative to the beginning of the sound, the sound file. All right. So the first one, I'm actually going to have to defer on this one because the, the reason for that is that the prologue is an, um, an instrumental cue. Uh, and there are just a few lines of, um, there's just a few lines of dialogue in there. Here, that very first one should actually fire right at the beginning. That's just going to kind of reset the board for the purpose of setting the DCA groups to exactly the way they need to be configured for the start of the show. Just in case, sometimes if you run a queue um, in preparation, like as a warm up uh, in front of a, a performance, then it may be that the board is configured to something else, to another piece of music. And so I just want to make sure that at the very beginning of the show, when we start the first music queue, I'm going to make sure that um, the prologue configuration of all the DCA groups is recalled so that I have all, I can make sure that all the settings are going to be made right. All right. So, but what I, was, what I was saying is, so the first music queue is instrumental and there every now and then there's a couple of uh, dialogue lines and um, I don't know exactly where they happen. It's not clear from the combination of looking at the score and looking at the uh, at the script. It's not quite clear where everything happens. So rather than working this out right now, I'm just going to wait, wait until the blocking is done for that. And I'm going to mark this here as to do. And so then I'm just going to leave that um, left over. I'm going to leave that for later to decide where those individual events happen. But I do know that I have all the events that have to happen in the order that they have to happen already lined up here. I just need to configure the, the time code offset or the, the offset of time that has to pass after the beginning of the sound. Um, I'm going to have to still set that up. So that's what this to do means here. So now let's go into the next, uh, the next music cue here. So the first one is again, this first recall Q3, that's going to have to happen right when the music starts. So I'm just going to leave that at uh, time code zero or time offset zero. And I'm actually going on my other computer to just get a visual representation so I can recall what I was looking at and looking for. So jet song dialogue, that is number, that's number three, that's jet song dialogue. And it just opens a bunch of Jets microphones for their dialogue, and that's it. So that's that's how the song starts. Now, the riff solo, that starts once, once riff starts singing. That's in about uh, measure 24. So let's just see what happens here. Okay, that's, so where are we going at that point? Oh, here it starts, right here, right here where that bassoon comes in. So there are some dialogue lines that lead right up to it, but Riff has a dialogue that goes over these four measures that you can hear that are starting here. Now here, one, two, three, four, and then here you start singing. So somewhere here, we can just recall the next cue. So let's just call it 25 seconds. So riff solo that's going to be right here so 25 seconds in we're going to set that and that's great so then so now i'm on riff solo now the next cue is i'm actually going to rename this here something a little bit more precise i'm going to call that dialogue insert measure 72 uh, 71 Okay, that's the same name that I also carry in the uh, Q list in the X32 uh, show control. So that just is a, an extra confirmation of you know what we're talking about. So this dialogue insert then happens in measure 71. So let's go back to the, I think that might be somewhere right back here. There, right here. 
right here is where that happens. Okay, so let's call that one minute and four seconds. I'm gonna put that in here, right here. One minute and four seconds. Great. All right. The next one again. I'm looking at my other screen here. Uh, oh, when the jets. Okay, that's everybody singing, and that's measure one hundred. So let's name it here, just so we have a little easier time following along and remembering. Oh, when. Jets. Let's so put it in quotation marks so that we know that it's a, it's a music line. And that's going to happen in measure 100. Awesome. And let's go back to the sound file and spot that. Probably somewhere here. <laughs> Uh, that right there, right there is where that happens. Just <clears throat> check something here. Yeah, very good. Okay, right here, that's at one twenty-eight. Let's call it that. Okay. Oh, and the Jets one twenty-eight. Okay, and then at the very end, we're going to recall Q number one, which is mute all. Okay, that's literally at the very, very, very end of the sound file. So I'm going to just escape from running here so you can see how, how long this is. So at the very, very end of it, 308, I'll just actually call it that. I'm going to make it right at 308. That's when uh, this last recall fires and just mutes everything. Now, when you do this on the board, on the console, or when you at least connect it with your X32 edit, when you connect it to the board, what I like to do is I like to double check that this is actually working properly. And the way to do this is when you are when you have selected whatever event is here, you can also actually select multiple events, but that doesn't apply to, to this type of event. Uh, and you go into the settings tab here, there's a button back here that says send message. And that you can use that to double check that the, cor the correct um, Q number is actually recalled, right? So I like to do that just to confirm and making sure that I didn't make some minor mistake in the way that these numbers here are set up. And um, so that's, I, I like to do that for everything that I set up. Once I've, I've done it, I'm just going to highlight this and click send message and double check and make sure that um, the correct um, Q is actually recalled, right? Okay, onwards. So see, that's that's really all there is to it. And you can see from, from this process, that's actually pretty easy to do when you have the song here and you have the, the music score right next to you. It's a very easy way to just quickly spot this. There's hardly you know an easier way to do this uh, up front and log it into this uh, spreadsheet. So that's why, because I was planning on going through this process exactly the way I'm showing you right here, that's why I didn't log these numbers in the spreadsheet earlier and just, um, you know, I was planning on doing it the way I'm showing you right now. Okay, so change of scene. I'm gonna refer on the other screen to my spreadsheet to see if I have any any other notes on this one. Um, let's see where we jet song is done. change of scene. So the question here is, um, and I'm going to actually look into the score for that purpose to see if I can find an answer. And the question is, if um, that dialogue happens 
during the queue or after the queue. So Jet Song Chase. It seems like that queue starts right after the applause. Yeah, applause segue is the note at the bottom of uh, the song that we just did. So that means the Jet Song Chase queue plays right after the applause settles. And it seems like there's a little bit of a... Uh, it says actually fade when lights come up. Okay, that actually gives us an opportunity to show something. So it should actually be done the same way that this is going on. Um, all right, so it has to be done slightly differently. What has to happen here is, oh, I know the problem. The problem is that I don't have the music cue on this one yet. So this is a to it goes on the to do list. I'm gonna put to do here, and I'm gonna show you what I wanted to show you later. Um, all right, yeah. So that's that's a different problem. I don't have for some reason. I don't have the music cue for this one. I haven't made this one yet. So so don't worry about it. So then we're going to the next one. That's a Tony cue and. Um, It's coming out of a setting where we just need to mute four. That's Riff. That's Riff's channel. And then Tony is left over uh, singing by himself. But the way I'm going to do this is uh, there's a potential. You know, sometimes with cue lines, it's a little tricky. Sometimes cue lines uh, kind of linger into the beginning of the music. So I'm going to just delay this mute here just by a couple of seconds. And this might be something that has to be corrected because it might be that it turns out that, you know, the cue line is actually completely done and he runs off and he's not going to say anything anymore. And if that's the case, if always reliably the cue line is already done at the time we want to start the music, then I'm just going to remove this thing here. And that's what that's going to be. Okay, so it's easy to correct, but for now, I'm just going to leave it here. So just we have a little bit of leeway in case we decide we want to fire this music cue um, kind of in the middle or in the beginning or somewhere inside the cue line. Well, that's probably not. You know what? I'm going to reverse that. and I'm going to do it the other way around. So I'm just going to hit uh, keep this here at the very beginning of this cue um, and rely on the idea that the cue line should be done and he's running off that way. I don't get any running wind into his mic and that's going to make it cleaner. All right. So in the recall Q1 mute, all that's supposed to happen at the very end of the song. So again, I'm going to put the times time offset in here that lines up right with the end of the song. I'm just going to double check that Tony is actually singing to the very end. And yeah, it's true. There's kind of an, an there's an applause segue on this one as well. And it's fading out at the end of this one. So this might also need some tweaking later. But for the time being, I'm just going to put that smack to the very end of the song, which is at 226. All right. Okay. So now here's the next one. We want to recall number eight on this one. And this is something coming cha uh, chase. So that's a change of scene. So that's, again, the question is, what happens first? So it says, repeat if necessary and fate and lights come up on the next scene. So this gives me an opportunity to show you how to, how to do that. So what we want to do here is we need another group because this will require another uh, operator into action. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this group, but I'm going to take this out from here. The music cue I'm going to take out. I'm going to also take this recall cue out. And then this here is I'm going to put change of scene. So now I would like to know what scene that is. And my handy dandy spreadsheet tells me it is scene three. 
scene three. Lights up when ready. And in that, with that trigger, that's a manual trigger, we want to set set up the board for this for this scene, scene number three. Okay, let me actually put on here bridal shop. Okay, scene three bridal shop lights up when ready. So what we want to do is we want to set the, set up the board for the dialogue here. And then we also want to fade out the music. And this is what I'm going to show you here, how to do that, okay? So you highlight the music cue that you want to fade, and you click on this fade symbol. This creates a fade event. Then you can grab this event and move it so that you, we're going to want to move it here so that we can manually trigger it, okay? And and this fade is gonna is invalid at the moment. That's because we haven't configured it right yet. Because there's one thing you always need to set on on that, and that is in the audio levels here. You need to just simply pull this fader up and pull it back down so that it shows infinity here. So now the fade has a set value that it's supposed to fade to, and now you see the red X has has uh, disappeared. And this fade is valid. So um, now all we need to do is configure the duration of the fade. The fade duration is by default set for three seconds. That's probably not not half bad for this particular ca case. So let me show you how it works. Here's the cue playing. <clears throat> okay. So now let's say this the scene is established and we want to move on with the bridal shop. So now I'm going to hit bridal shop lights up when ready. You see the fade that we put in here has now faded the music here. It was a little sudden, so I'm gonna just lengthen that a little bit. Let's put five seconds in here. Uh, that way it's gonna go a little bit more gently. Um, so the fade has been fired, which has triggered the fade out on this cue, according to the settings in the fade. Oh, there's one more thing, home button, hold on. What is the button here? So we're on the fade. We want to also stop the stop target when done. That's important to do that. Um, well, it's not terribly important, but it's kind of nice and clean because then when you do that, the queue will actually stop and you don't have like an event left over as like a, um, a little orphan that's still running around in circles. You want to just kill it once it's once the fade is done. Okay, so so okay, so let's uh, let's look at this again. So here we go. So the queue is running as you know after the applause. So this one is done. You you're gonna run this one. Then so you're gonna run this queue once the scene change is completed. We are ready for lights up. You manually trigger this cue, which will fade out the cue that is still the music that's still playing from this. It'll set up the board for what you need in the in this following dialogue scene for the bridal shop scene three, and the light designer can also put uh, his light cues in here so that they are triggered by that same uh, operator interaction operator input all at the same time, right? So that way, that's that's how this is done. That makes sense. Now, here is something that happens inside this scene. Bernardo and Chino enter. This is also just a manual click by the operator, by the QLab operator. And that will then remote fire or remote control the board settings and unmute these two microphones, which are obviously the microphones for Bernardo and Chino. Okay. Awesomeness. All right. Great. So let's move on. Dance at the gym. Everything here is being reset. Let's see what this is doing. Let me see what Q9 is. Dance hall. So that's the dance hall. And dance at the gym. Mm. 
me to take a quick look at the script here. Well, actually, I should be able to see this in my handy dandy spreadsheet dance hall that's right here. So dance hall dance gym begins. Aha. Okay, that's interesting. So I have a slight mishap here because there's no crop key in the dance hall and my my setting, my DCA values here, or my I should say my channel label says crop key, but I have a feeling that somehow this didn't get saved properly. Yeah, and this is supposed to be this is definitely supposed to be um uh glad hand. So I'm just gonna fix this here real quick. Oh, these are all I have to fix them all. All right, hold on. Let me pause here for a moment here. Okay, I fixed it. It wasn't a big problem, but just one of those traps where the parameter filters that I had selected for um, the snippet was not actually active. There's a little flaw in the there's a little flaw in the um, X32 edit software for at least in the version version for Windows, um, where it sometimes it's hard to tell uh, when the parameter filters aren't actually selected properly. Okay, so we're here. We call Q9, and the question here is if that Q should fire at the beginning. All right. Now, to figure this one out, again, I could wait for the rehearsals and just kind of see how the blocking comes out. There would probably be a faster way to go with this, or I can see if I can investigate. So, scene for. Both gangs are jitterbugging widely with their bodies, but uh, but their faces, although they're enjoying themselves, remain cool, almost detached. The line between the two gangs is sharply defined by the colors, blah, blah, blah. The dancing is a physical and emotional release for these kids. All right. So this is starting the dialogue here is glad hand. All right, boys and girls. Let's see where that is. I think I have that line also in the score. This is really a pet peeve of mine. It's like, how can you possibly expect directors and music directors to do all this research on where the heck is supposed to, what's supposed to happen between uh, the score? There's always some information in the score and some information is in the in the script and it's usually not not easily in the same place okay so it seems like this whole uh thing just kind of starts with them all dancing all right here we go okay so that is where the promenade starts that's the second cue i got that dialogue Okay, let's see. It's called Glad Hand. Hmm. I wish there was a clear place to see where the music stops. You must find that instruction.
talk stops, ad libs. Hmm. Okay, so it says here handwritten note, pause the music. I see. So let's see what else in the in the music score. It says Bernardo enters with Maria, Anita, and Chino as the jet see them. They drop out of their dance one by one and withdraw to one side of the hall. The sharks draw to their side. Repeat if necessary and cut off as the two gangs move toward each other. <clears throat> Draw to the other side around Bernardino, Swiss consultation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it seems like pretty much the cut off of this music cue of the dance at the gym stops. This cut off happens when uh, this glad hand dialogue starts. So that means we need to reconfigure this in such a way that allows the operator, the Q Lab operator, to stop this music here, somewhere here. So this is kind of the gang confrontation. So we're going to have to see what we're going to have to see. We have to wait for blocking on this one. So the, the, the thing we have to see about is if this music is being let played out to a natural stop and it's just and if it's just this that all of a sudden just stops it naturally at the tail of the music or if we're going to want to have this come out sooner than this, which means we're going to have to fade it, okay? So for now, I think we can just leave this be. I'm just going to put this recall cue to the very end of the music. Let's see here. So you can see there's a couple of seconds of nothingness here in the back pretty much. So I'm just going to set this to 202. And um, right here, oops, come on. Oh, I see what's wrong. So I'm going to set this to 202, and more likely than not, this is going to go onto our to do list. So I'm just going to label it like this so we don't forget about it later. All right, cool. All right, next one. This is after the dialogue progresses, and here we go. So we have uh, some some dialogue going here. Then Gladhand said, that's it, kids. Keep the ball rolling. Around she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. All right, here we go. Music starts. So that's on, on this. We can maybe put actually a little bit. Uh, You all right. Here we go. That's the cue for this. And everyone's going to be muted at the beginning of this cue because that's a dance cue. Yes. So nothing happens in there. That's all good. We're done with that. And Let's see what the how the promenade ends. Da -da -da. See here, music starts and then the circle starts resolving, revolving. Glad hand whistle to his mouth and the center of the clock key blows the whistle and the music stops, leaving jet boys opposite chart girls and vice versa. There is a moment of tenseness. Bernardo reaches across the jet girl. Opposite for Anita's hand when she comes to him. Riff reaches for Velma and the kids of both gangs follow suit. So whatever happens there, it seems like uh, the whistle by Gladhand needs to trigger a fairly sudden fade out of this music. So let's prepare for that. Um Prepare for that. So we're just going to duplicate this cue. We're going to get rid of the music cue itself and also uh, rid of this recall cue. And in here, we, we need the fade out of this. So we're going to create the fade, move the fade to this next 
little group here. And this one we're going to call Stop Q on Glad Hands Whistle. All right. Stupid. Okay. Stop. Stop. There you go. Stop Q on Glad Hands Whistle. And this one, we're going to make this a rather quick. Okay. So, first of all, I'm going to get rid of the red cross by moving this master creator up and down so that it says minus infinity in there. And then we're going to adjust the duration of this fade. And that's supposed to be pretty, pretty darn sudden. So we're just going to start out with one second and let you listen to what this sounds like. So we go with this one. So that's pretty sudden without being just completely chopped off. That's probably going to be good. All right. So then... So then, the get-together has failed, and each side is on its own side of the hall as mambo music starts. Okay, so that's something that, again, will be started manually. That's this one. Mambo starts ma manually. And for this one, we need to recall Q10. That's the mambo cue. Everybody's unmuted for that one. So that's going to be pretty disastrous because... Um, Everybody's going to yell into their microphone mambo for this one. So we're going to have to massage the DCA group faders for that to be rather on the low side for the crowd mics so that they don't like blow our ears out, okay, or the audience's ears. Anyway, so that's good for now. We can leave that like this. We could also possibly delay this a little bit because um, the mambo kind of starts a little slowly. I mean, not slowly, but they don't need to talk right away. So it's, it's eight measures of this. There, mango, mango, go. Okay, that's where it goes. So right here, as long as we open them at about six seconds, we're going to be in business. All right, so let's do that. This cue here is going to come in on six seconds six seconds you just say six minutes i'm going to say six minutes right. very cool so that's good then i'm probably actually going to drill into that one a little bit more deeply because if i leave all of the microphones open the whole time we're going to get some music bleeding into the mics and they're actually not doing anything. So <clears throat> I tell you what, we're gonna just going to do this very surgically here. So right here where that was, Mambo, Mambo, go, off. Right here. Right here, da -da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. that's when their the first yelling is over. So that's call it 13 seconds. I'm just going to grab the recall Q1, mute all. I'm going to insert one of them here and put them put that one at 13 seconds. So then all mutes, uh, all mics are muted and they can dance without uh, bleeding the mambo music into all the mics and also without. Uh, having all their, their heavy breathing and wind noises and all the mics, that's going to be an issue otherwise. And now that we've done that, we actually need to go through and make sure the mics are, mics are open again for the few sep few times that they're actually yelling mumbo again. Okay, so... Uh, da, 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 da. Where's the piano section? I could theoretically use the MIDI app. Let me try this. Let me see if that is successful to get me in the ballpark. I'm going to pull up the mumbo music on the MIDI app to see if I can just figure out directly where measure number. Oh, 
Well, that's interesting. Starts at measure 58. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Okay, good. Right, anyway, so then the first mumbo comes in at 100. And what do you know? It's only the sharks yelling that. Let's see here. It's actually also only the sharks yelling, oh, it's sharks and jets and then all. I see. Interesting. Okay, well, that's cool. Here it's only sharks. So actually we're going to set up a slightly different cue for that so that it's actually only the sharks being on the mics. I don't think actually, I mean, this doesn't technically need to be mic'd even, but let me just do it right. So at measure 100 about, and that will be in, Oh, sadly, there's no time code in this app. Aye, aye, aye. Well, that's a bummer. It doesn't have any time reference. Well, it doesn't help. It does not help. It does not help. It does not have any time reference. All right. Well, in that case, I'm just going to need to spot it. So the problem is we don't we cannot we call this a Q as Q10 because that unmutes everyone, not just the sharks. Hmm. An interesting problem. Okay, well let's spot it first, and then we'll move this one, we'll duplicate that behind this one and we are going to modify it a little bit later and for now what we're going to do is spot this spot the spot so here's where the initial thing is Here you go. Yeah, right there where this gap is. Right there is where this goes. So that's 43 seconds. And then it's off again right away. It's off on for like three seconds. So 43, it needs to be on, and 46, it needs to come back off. All right. So let's put this one here to 43. And then we'll replicate the new all again right behind it. And that's going to be at 46. And then we have another one of these. Um, <clears throat> that one. Mambo. Hold on, let me see what it is. Bum, 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 We'll call it 1559. We'll call it 58. Let's call it 58. It's this one right here. And then it's off again two seconds later. Let's call this one 101. There. Is that the last time? Let me check. Hmm. Mm. No, there's the wild stuff just before the very end. That's when they actually all come in. 
So Ah, there's more than I'm seeing. That's the problem here. Okay, so there's way more, there's way more, there's way more. Let's see how this whole thing ends. Oh no, that's, that's sorry. This is because this thing is married to the chacha. So I'm, um, all right, this means we need to go in. Okay, that's so somewhere here. Let me just listen again from here. Mm -hmm. There it is. No, right here. Right here, we need to be on. So let's call that 210. And that's this one here. 210. And it goes. And that's it. So somewhere here we can go back out. 218. Right, move it all again in 218. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. 218. Okay. So that statement the crowd disappears as Tony and Maria approach each other and then it's segue into cha cha. Ah, in the cha cha, we have think steps that we've forgotten about. All right, that's cool. That's fun. Okay. Great. Good. Um, all right. Well, so there you see it. Um, so this last one here is um, sharks and jets. And jets. And this first one is also sharks and jets. And... And these here are sharks only. And so for them, for them, we need to create a different Q number for them. And the problem with that is now, you know, now that we've set up all these recall Q with specific numbers, we cannot uh, go into the X32 edit software and simply just add a Q in the middle of it because that offsets all of the <clears throat> all of these um, indices that we've used here, all the numbers that we've used in here. So the simple solution for that is um, to just set up a Q at the very end of it. So I'm just going to recall the Mumbo Q and I'm going to Mute everyone ex everyone who's not a who's not a a shark. Uh, 
Oh, okay. That's really lame. There are not many. There are not many sharks, even on microphones. But it's fine. It's fine. I'm just gonna create that. Okay. So I'm gonna just go put this at the very end, even though it doesn't belong at the very end. But that's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm gonna call that Mumbo Sharks. Right. And then I'm going to create a queue also at the very end. I'll call that one Rumbo Sharks. And this happens to be queue number 40. So this queue here, I'm going to call it 40. Also this one. And then I'll make sure that the program number is the correct one, which also needs to be 40 in this case, here and here. And there you go. That way we have it all mapped out. So this was a little bit more tedious and you can see, you know, sometimes it is a little tedious, particularly, I mean, this is particularly tedious because it's a long instrumental number that has not much um, going in terms of differences, differentiation within the music. So it's a little bit harder to spot, uh, but yeah, so that's what we do. Now, here's another interesting case for you to kind of study. So you can see here what happens is, so this was all the mumbo, mumbo plays from the beginning of the queue. And then it actually transitions. That's the end of mumbo. And this is the beginning of cha-cha. So this is the same number, but you can see there's like a note hanging over into this next one. And so that's kind of how this goes. And the way I've done this here uh, is I've spotted this, this piece already with this spot here, right here in the file, where it transitions from the Mambo queue to the Cha-Cha queue. And I called that uh, 228. And so I put the beginning of Cha-Cha in here and I'm triggering it automatically as at the time offset of two minutes and 28 seconds playing from the beginning of this group. So you can see here, this is a small group inside a bigger group. The bigger group is the one that contains the sound file. And it's playing, as you can, as I just showed you, it's playing two music cues consecutively and even going into the third one after the cha-cha is done. That's why I've labeled this like this here, mambo cha to cha-cha to the beginning of the meeting scene. So it just plays as one continuous sound file. And then I just put... Um, those in here as groups and that's again to make the life of our light designer a little bit easier because now they have already the spot hey where does the cha-cha start in this and there you go it starts right here at 20, uh, 228 and you can just put your light events into the same group or or just you know create what however you want to do it. it doesn't matter but you don't need to you know figure out where the queue needs to go if you want to fire a queue right at the beginning of cha-cha you just put it in here and it'll be executed right there. Okay, so there's our mute all. We may not actually need that one because that yelling here at the end of the queue is not going to the very end. So we're just gonna actually eliminate this one because thankfully we were able to mute this sooner, but I'm still going to leave this here again for everyone's orientation of where in the sound file um, this next this next piece starts. Now, slow this uh, description here, slowly as though in a dream, they drift into the steps of the dance, always looking at each other, completely lost in each other, unaware of anything, any place, any time, anything but one another. Then the meeting scene starts. So that means nothing happens here in terms of uh, anything going on uh, for that's relevant to mic opens or mic closes. So with this last mute all that happens after the yelling um, in inside the mumbo. Mumbo plays out to the end. Chacha starts. This is where it starts. I'm just leaving this as a marker here for the light designer. 
And then the cha-cha plays all the way and at 328 of this sound file here, right around here, right around here, the meeting scene starts. See, this is the end of the cha-cha. That's the ending of cha-cha. And here it transitions again with a hanging over note, the note that hangs over into the next cue. There you go, that's the meeting scene. That's where the meeting scene starts. So it's right here. And for that one, we want to open the mics for Tony and Maria. And that is meeting scene. Yes, it does the right thing. Okay, we're awesome. We're good. Then in the middle of the meeting scene, there is an interruption where they all of a sudden talk for a little bit longer and we wanted to kind of keep that free. And then after that, the second part of the meeting scene plays. And I'm gonna put right in here, I'm going to put I'm going to put a marker for the QLab operator. So here's the meeting scene. Mm. Bum, 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 bum. You know what? I don't recall. I don't remember. Where does this one start? Can you play it? Yes. Yes, yes. It's fun. I think now I never will. After but I think now I never will. Okay. Get rid of this. So it's not so long after I think now I never will. Let me just say Q. I think no, I never will. All right. Very good. And that plays to the oh, okay, interesting. Now this one, kind of the end of the actual meeting scene is somewhere here. And then it transitions into this kind of stuff. And it says here, repeat if necessary until cut off by the whistle. Okay, so that's another one of those um, uh, same type of scenarios that requires the same kind of treatment as this here. So that's exactly the same kind of thing, deal here. So let's go put that a duplicate of this one here. Now we have to get rid of this fade because this fade pertains to the promenade queue. Okay, we don't want that. We're gonna get rid of this one. And then instead of doing that, we're going to put um, a fade for this queue in there. Here you go. And we're gonna to have to validate it by going into the audio levels and creating a minus infinity mark here on the master fader. And then we also want to have this one Let's just make this also a one second cue. A one second fade, I mean. Okay. Stop on glad hand, stop cue and glad hands whistle. That's a manual. Beautiful. And then after that, and you double check if. 
Let's see what the jump cue does. Okay, this is supposed to be somewhat frenetic, All right? Good enough. Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening here within that. So let's see if we can spot this. Let's get the chicks and kick it. So that's basically this thing ends after the dialogue is done. So let me double check. Jump or right. unmute five. That's to happen right away when the queue starts. Uh, Tony is open anyway, and Maria Maria is open also. So that means Riff is actually uh, Bernardo number number five is opened here right when it starts, and then unmute Riff and Chino. That is a to do. There's not really a good way to to spot this right now. The easy way out on this one will be to just open them all at the beginning or just do a short delay, which is, I guess, kind of what I did here. Five second delay that gives them a little bit of time to run their first bit of dialogue between Bernardo, um, Maria and Tony. And then we can unmute the other two as they come in here. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, and then, right, and glad hand comes in a little bit later as well. So I'm just having them all open here so I don't have to bother uh, firing, you know, manual cues in the middle of music. That's kind of like redundant. So, but anyway, here's a to-do so that I, I don't forget to reaffirm that that needs to be done. All right, and then... So this is a very strange thing because it says here, Music starts again, but that's so apparently the music is that music, that uh, jump music is somehow supposed to start and stop. Um, and there is a little bit of, but I mean, there's no real stop. So I don't, I don't really understand how this is supposed to be done. This has to be worked out in the, in the rehearsal, in the blocking and how it all is supposed to be read. And, um, that's it has a big big fat to do on it all right next one is maria that's well, fairly obvious what it is and how it works so Uh. Hmm. Uh, okay, so I spotted this already. This is where the Tony solo starts, and this is where the new doll is, and that's already done. Cool. Balcony scene is a longer thing. All right, I think we're pretty far into this video, so I'm going to just end the video now and post it for you so you can kind of get a feel for the relative tediousness of this of this um, job and, and how this works. But, uh, you know, it's really just like setting up light cues. It's tedious when you do it. But the benefit is that everything is automated and you don't have to worry about anything being unreliable for the entire run. So, you know, if you have 20 shows or 30 shows or how many shows you have, and you know that they're all going to be reliably muted and unmuted for all the mics during all the music cues, that's an awesome an awesome incentive, an awesome reward for, uh, you know, doing this this work here, as you're setting up the cues with some tediousness. All right. Well, have fun, and uh, hopefully you like this video and you take something away from it. 
Um, this is how I do it. If you like it, like the video. If you have any questions, you can ask them. And yeah, this is Thomas Parker signing off on the Artisan Song Channel. Take care.